So I'm now going to go over a proof of um, Arrow's impossibility theorem, which is um, taken from Sen's uh, article, Rationality and Social Choice, which is in the syllabus and in the reading. Um, this proof is very elegant and simple. Uh, it's, it's much more elegant and much simpler than that found in um, Mescalel, Winston, and Green, for example. So it involves two two lemmas. Uh, we must first go through those lemmas um, one by one. So the first lemma is the, the field expansion lemma, which is the idea that if a group is decisive over a particular pair, it, it will also be decisive over all, uh, all pairs of social alternatives. So this is not obvious. Uh, how do we prove this? Well, we, we consider um, a number of alternative states, four of them, x, y, a, and b. And um, so we have the members of a group G and then the rest of people, not G. I'm, I'm go going to use this notation here. Now, what we assume here is that um, by unrestricted domain, we can assume particular preferences, particular individual preferences. So let's assume that everyone in G ranks A preferred to X and Y preferred to B. And uh, that every member in not G has the same preferences so holds A over X and Y over B. Now, regarding all the other pairs, we could have any uh, particular individual conf configurations of preferences. However, the members of G, uh, we assume that they are in agreement in terms of how to rank X and Y. And whatever the ranking is, um, we assume that G will be decisive um, over X and Y. So G will decide, the members of G will decide what the social ranking is for the pair X and Y, X, Y. So let's assume, for example, that X is preferred to Y, that all members of G prefer X over Y, and that that is reflected by the uh, social ranking. So G is socially decisive over X and Y. Now, by the, the Pareto criterion, uh, let's consider the social preference. What do we know? Well, all, all members here are of G, both of G and not G, are in agreement that A must be preferred to X and Y must be preferred to B. So this is simply the Pareto requirement. And in addition, we know that X is preferred to Y. Uh, this is because G is decisive uh, right here. So this is what we have. Now, if A is preferred to X, X is preferred to Y, and Y is preferred to B, by transitivity, we must have A prefer to B. So A must be preferred to be by transitivity. Uh, at the social level. Uh, and this must also be the preference of the members of G. Otherwise, the members of G would also would be intransitive, right? Um, because, uh, and let me change color. To show it, to show you this, so we also have a preferred to x, x preferred to y, and y preferred to b. Right. So we must also have that all members, if they are transitive, if they are rational. I'm sorry. The members of group G must also prefer a to b. So they are decisive, right? Because their individual preference dictates the social preference. So what we've shown here is that if 
the members of G are decisive over one pair, X and Y, then uh, they must also be decisive over another pair, A and B. Now we've, we've proven this result with a particular uh, configuration of preferences, but because of the condition of um, pairwise independence, um, the this result this result must hold uh, no matter what because this if what we've established is that if the social preference reflects a group G's preference of X over Y for all members of G, then if um, all members of G are also in agreement that A is preferred to B, then we've, we've, we've shown um, that it must be the case that this is also true at the social level because um, the, the rankings, the, the social ranking between A and B is only a function of individual group members preference between A and B, and it, it, it doesn't matter what the other pairs, what the preferences that relate to the other pairs are. So because of pairwise independence, we, we're actually showing that this result, uh, that we've, we've established this result with a specific configuration of preferences, but this result m m must actually hold uh, throughout. Now the, the second part the second lemma to this involved in the proof is the group contraction lemma, which is the idea that if a group is um, decisive over a particular pair, then so is a smaller group contained in it. And uh, the proof of it is, is as follows. Consider a, a group G, which is decisive, and a partition it into two subgroups, G1 and G2. Now let everyone in G1 prefer X over Y and X over Z. We're, we're considering, by the way, three alternatives, X, Y, and Z. Um, and the, the, the preference between Y and Z is undecided here, so it could be anything. Um, anything. For the members of G2, we have the following uh, preferences. We have everyone in G2 prefer X to Y, and uh, prefer Z to Y, but the pair X and Z is undecided. So we don't know anything about the individual preferences. Now let's consider the social ranking between X and Z. Social ranking. Now if X is preferred to Z, so if we have the following ranking, X is preferred to Z, then G1 is decisive because um, every member in G1 prefers X over Z. So that's the first possibility. Um, if X is preferred to Z at the social level, then G1 is decisive. And if um, Z is at least as good as X, which is the other possibility, then what do we have? We have Z at least as good as X, but by the Pareto criterion, X um, is preferred to Y because both groups prefer X to Y. So the social rule must reflect that. So X is preferred to Y. And therefore, by transitivity, the social rule must be that Z is preferred to Y, which is precisely uh, group G2's preference that uh, between Z and Y. So group G2 is decisive. 
So what we've shown is that either G1 or D G2 must be decisive, and that's precisely what the, the lemma uh, holds. So we are now ready to prove Arrow's impossibility uh, theorem. Um, first, let me, let me just point out that we have used in those two lemmas, the field expansion lemma and the group contraction lemma, we've used um, a number of these axioms. Uh, in Arrow's framework, we've used the um, universal domain, right, by assuming a, cer a certain configuration of preferences. We have used uh, the pairwise independence uh, that's in the, the uh, field expansion lemma. And we have used the transitivity of the social preference as well as um, uh, the Pareto criteria. And what we can show is if the Pareto criteria holds, we, given these axioms, we end up with a dictator. And the way that we do it is that the Pareto criteria is essentially the idea that society as a whole must be decisive over a particular pair, right? So we have uh, a group G, which is society at large, which is decisive over a pair. That's the Pareto criterion. But the field expansion lemma says that if it's decisive, if a group is decisive over one pair, it must be decisive over all pairs. So society at large is decisive. And if society at, li at large is decisive, we must be able to subdivide society and find a subgroup which is also decisive, and that's from the uh, group contraction lemma. And uh, we can continue subdividing until we find a, the smallest subgroup possible, which will be one individual who will be decisive, and that individual will be a dictator. Because by definition, a dictator is one individual whose preference um, is decisive, um, who is decisive over all, all pairs, uh, so that the social group reflects that individual's preference. So we, it is very elegant proof. You start with the Pareto criterion applied to society at large, and you can show that that entails the existence of a dictator, and that's um, Arrow's impossibility theorem, uh, which is uh, the unavoidability of dictatorship if the social welfare functional is rational, i.e. transitive, and uh, the other axioms are uh, met.